Hello students, I hope you all are doing fine. Previously, we have discussed in this chapter about various types of mixture, homogeneous mixture and heterogeneous mixture. Under homogeneous mixture, we had discussed about true solution and under heterogeneous mixture, we had discussed about colloidal solution and suspension. Today, we will continue from there and today our topic of discussion will be how to separate the components of a mixture. And I think in your lower classes, you have studied about several techniques how to separate the components of a mixture. For example, filtration, sieving, winnowing, magnetic separation. These are the some simple techniques that you have studied in your lower class. Today, we are going to discuss about few more techniques to separate the components of a mixture. And those techniques are on your screen, evaporation, centrifugation, using separating funnel, sublimation, chromatography, distillation and fractional distillation, and crystallization. So, we will be discussing one after another these all techniques. So, moving on to the first technique that is your evaporation. So here one example that how can we obtain colored component from a blue or black ink. Obvious thing the answer is evaporation. But why would we use evaporation as the technique? What is the scientific principle behind evaporation? And which type of mixtures can be separated using evaporation? The process of conversion of a substance from a liquid state to gaseous state is called evaporation and the substance is said to be volatile. That means a mixture containing one of the component as volatile that means which upon heating will get converted into gaseous state those type of mixtures can be separated by using the process of evaporation. That means if two components are there if a mixture contains two component one of the component can be evaporated out that means volatile in nature then we can separate out the other component from it by the process of evaporation. One such example is a separation of dyes from ink that is which is dissolved in water. Ink is a solution of ink pigments that is dyes in water. So here your dyes are your solute particles and here water is a solvent particle. So, water being volatile in nature, when you heat them, it will get evaporated out and easily we can separate out. And this can be explained with a diagram. That is, if you see at the diagram in front of you, it's a beaker containing water and over that beaker, if you see, there is a watch glass containing a mixture of ink in water. So, when it is heated, then the water particle is getting evaporated out. The question that comes into mind is that why are we heating the watch glass containing ink over a beaker containing water? The answer is very simple. That is because if you heat that watch glass containing ink directly over on a flame, then that ink may decompose and due to uneven heating, the watch glass may also break. But if we heat on a beaker containing water, it will give us a uniform heating and there will be no such accidents or the beaker or the watch glass will not break. So, in this technique what we are separating, we are separating the dyes which is present in the ink and as you know ink is a mixture of water and the dyes and here your ink dyes or the pigments get separated out by the process of evaporation. Next example and let us go to discuss another such techniques. That is how can we separate cream from milk in our everyday life. We are using milk and milk is a supplement for the proper growth of our body. As we already have discussed that milk is a heterogeneous mixture, it is a colloidal solution. That means it has several other components. So one such component is your cream. So how can we obtain cream from milk? Can you guess the technique? The technique used here is centrifugation. Now question is what is centrifugation and what is the scientific principle behind it? 
the scientific principle behind centrifugation is that the denser particle will settle down and the lighter particles will float when that mixture is rotated at a very high speed. When a mixture is rotated at a very high speed, the heavier particles will force to settle down and the lighter particles will be floating at the surface. And in that way, we can separate a component from that means in case of milk, the cream being lighter, when you rotate that milk at a very high speed, the cream will start floating at the surface and easily you can separate out. So look at the slide, as you can see the principle is the denser particles are forced to settle down to the bottom and the lighter particles stay at the top when spun rapidly, spun means rotated at a very high speed. So let us discuss about what are the other application of centrifugation. Centrifugation is also used in the field of medical science. If you have ever visited any diagnostic center for your blood test or urine test, when you give that blood or urine sample to them, what they do, they separate the components which are present in ink. And as you can see in the screen that the centrifuging machine is moving and here in that screen you are seeing that it is rotating at a very slow speed so that I can explain you that it is getting rotated. But in actual practice, it gets rotated at a very high speed. So let us understand the principle and the working of centrifugation by watching a very small video related to your centrifugation. Centrifugation is a process in which a suspension is rotated in a circle around a central axis at different speeds. In a centrifuge, the components settle down due to the centrifugal force. Here is a beaker containing a mixture of chalk powder and water. Transfer a part of the mixture into a centrifugation tube. Switch on the centrifuge to allow the tubes to spin for a few minutes. Switch off the centrifuge and look for the sediment at the bottom of the tube. The largest and heaviest materials sediment at the bottom of the tube. The solution at the top, also called the supernatant, can be poured out without disturbing the sediment. Centrifugation is used in microbiology labs and chemical and food industries. The principle of centrifugation is also used to squeeze out water from the clothes in a washing machine. So as you saw in the video that your principle of centrifugation is applicable also to the washing machine that we use at our home to clean our clothes. When we take out the clothes from washing machine, we see that all the water has been separated from the clothes. You must be wondering how? Because in washing machine also that tub rotates at a very high speed and water being heavier will force down and that will separate out from the clothes and we get a dry cloth. So that is the application of your centrifugation. Moving on to the next, let's see some other mixture how they can be separated. The question is how can we separate a mixture of two immiscible liquids that is kerosene oil and water. So when I say immiscible liquid means the liquids which do not mix with each other. That means the liquid forms a heterogeneous mixture rather than your homogeneous mixture. These two liquids will be immiscible. Why? That is because their densities will be different. And as they have different densities, they will form different layers. So how to separate them? These two immiscible liquid that is kerosene oil and water. They can be separated using a technique that is called as using separating funnel. And what is the principle of separating funnel? The principle is that the immiscible liquid separate out in layers depending on their densities. That means in a separating funnel, they will form two different layers. The liquid having high density 
will be at the lower layer and the liquid having higher densities will be at the top layer. So let's understand the principle of separating immiscible liquid by using separating funnel from the videos and the pictures given. As you can see in the picture that water forms a lower layer and the kerosene oil forms a topmost layer. And if you can see in that picture there is a stopcock. When you release that stopcock, first the water will flow out and that can be collected. Then once all the water gets separated out, stop that stopcock and take another beaker and release the stopcock and collect the kerosene oil. So this is how we can separate out kerosene oil and water from each other. We can understand it with a much easy by watching a video related to it. A separating funnel is used in laboratories to separate two or more immiscible liquids. Let's use a separating funnel to separate a mixture of oil and water. Pour the mixture of oil and water in a separating funnel. Note that water being denser forms the lower layer and oil being lighter forms the upper layer. Now, open the tap at the bottom of the separating funnel to let the water run out. Empty the upper layer in a separate container. The principle used for separation of immiscible liquids is also used in the extraction of iron from its ore. So I think it's very much clear now how to separate two immiscible liquid by using a separating funnel. So dear students, let's move on and let us discuss how to separate some other mixtures by using some other techniques. Now, how can we separate a mixture of salt and camphor from each other? Here the type of mixture is solid and solid. Here we are taking a mixture, both the components are solid. So how to separate salt and camphor? What techniques can be used here in order to separate salt from camphor? As you know, camphor is a sublimable solid. That means when you heat camphor will get directly converted into gaseous state. So the principle is here, one of the solid is sublimable and the other one is not. So to separate this type of mixture, we can use the technique called as sublimation. So what is sublimation? The process of converting a substance directly from a solid to gaseous or vapor phase on heating without passing through the liquid phase is called as a sublimation. This method is used to separate mixtures that contains a sublimable volatile component from a non-sublimable impurity. So if you see here, the salt is non-sublimable, the camphor is a sublimable solid. So when you heat both of them, what will happen? The vapors of camphor will start forming. If you look at the diagram, in that watch glass we have taken a mixture of camphor and common salt or also we can take the example of some other sublimable solid like ammonium chloride, iodine, naphthalene, anthracene. These all solids are also sublimable in nature. So here in the diagram that you are seeing, it is a mixture of ammonium chloride and common salt. So we will perform an activity to understand how to separate ammonium chloride from a mixture of salt and ammonium chloride. So dear students, let us try to understand the technique of sublimation by performing an activity with ammonium chloride and sodium salt that is sodium chloride. So before I st start that activity, you must be very very careful while handling with any type of flame. Here I am going to use a spirit lamp. So while using any spirit lamp in the lab, be very much careful 
and do that activity or experiment under the supervision of your teachers only. So let us perform that activity. So this is a spirit lamp that I will use and this is a tripod stand. What I have taken here in this china dish is a mixture of your sodium chloride and ammonium chloride. So I will mix it thoroughly once again and as both of the salt are white crystals, it is very difficult to distinguish between them and they can only be separated by the process of sublimation. So what I am going to do is I am going to put it over the flame and we will take a conical funnel and I will keep it inverted way so that the vapors of ammonium chloride do not pass away. And after some time what we are going to observe that the vapors of ammonium chloride will get deposited at the walls of this conical funnel and the vapors gradually when we go on heating the salt will remain as a residue and your ammonium chloride will get separated out in the form of vapors and gradually when it will strike the walls of that funnel it will get deposited at the funnel and we can see that a white deposition gradually will happen at the top of this funnel and that is how we can separate out ammonium chloride from a mixture of common salt and ammonium chloride. From the activity we could understand how to separate a mixture of ammonium chloride and common salt. Let us discuss about another mixture and another technique that is how can we separate colors in a dye. As you know a dye cannot be consist of only one single color, it consists of several different colors. So how to separate the colors which are present in a dye. The technique that we use to separate the colors from a dye is your chromatography. Chromatography is a technique used for separation of those solute that dissolve in the same solvent. As you know chromatography the word itself suggests chroma means color. That means to separate the color component. The scientific principle involved here is that the solute particles are soluble in the same solvent. That means we can have two or more solute which are dissolved in the same solvent. So we need to separate those solute as in the case of dye the colors are the solute here. So how to separate them? The technique is that the component which is more soluble in the solvent will diffuse at a greater rate along with the solvent. So to understand this technique let us watch a video and we will be very clear about how chromatography is done and what are the application of chromatography. As you can see in the picture the diagram shows how to separate the colors present in a dye. So this video will help you to understand. Chromatography is the method of separating and identifying various components in a mixture where the solutes dissolve in the same solvent. Let's see a chromatographic separation. Take a colored candy in a beaker. Dissolve it in a solvent like water. Draw a thin line across the bottom of the chromatography paper approximately 3 centimeters above the lower edge. Mark 4 crosses on the line about 1 centimeter apart. Put a spot of the candy solution on the first cross using a glass rod. Then add spots of known dyes on the remaining crosses to help in comparison. Now dip the chromatography paper into a solvent. The solvent will carry the dyes present in the candy solution as well as the known dyes upwards in the chromatography paper. The level to which the dyes are carried in the chromatography paper will depend on the solubility of the dye in the solvent. The components of the mixture can then be identified by comparing them with the known dyes. Chromatography is used in fingerprinting and testing 
for the presence of medicines in urine and blood samples. So, I think it is very much clear from the video that a component of a dye can be separated using chromatography. So, what we saw that in a color as the components are soluble in a different extent. That means, the solute which is more soluble in the solvent is rising to a greater height as the rate of diffusion is faster. So, that is how we can separate out a component of dyes using chromatography method. And the uses of chromatography is also done in the field of forensic science. As you all are aware, in our sports, there is a doping test is done for all the players or all the athletician. So, there their blood is tested so as to find out if any medicine supplement or drug supplement is present in their blood. So, chromatography technique is very much helpful finding out all this in the field of sports also. So, dear students, let us move on to another technique that is how can we separate acetone and water from their mixture. As you know, acetone and water are two miscible liquids that means they mix with each other thoroughly and they form homogeneous mixture. So, here when two liquids are thoroughly mixing with each other, they are miscible with each other, we will use two different techniques based on the boiling point difference. If two liquids have a boiling point difference more than 25 Kelvin, we will go for simple distillation method. This method is useful for a mixture of liquids which are miscible having difference boiling point and boil without decomposition. Condition is that the liquid must not decompose while boiling. And here, if the boiling point difference between two liquid will be greater than 25 Kelvin, then only we will use simple distillation method. So, let us understand how simple distillation work and how using simple distillation method miscible liquids can be separated. As you can see the diagram, this is a setup which is done for separating miscible liquid and this is a simple distillation setup. Let us watch another video to understand how this technique helps us to separate out two miscible liquid. Let us see how to separate the components from a mixture of pentane and toluene. Pentane has a boiling point of 36 degrees centigrade and toluene has a boiling point of 111 degrees centigrade. Distillation is the method of choice for separating miscible liquids having a difference of at least 25 degrees in their boiling points. Heat the mixture in a round bottom flask. Pentane with a lower boiling point vaporizes first and passes through the water condenser. The vapors of pentane are cooled by the circulating cold water in the condenser. The condensed distillate is collected in a collection or condensation flask. Toluene is left behind as the residue in the round bottom flask. Thus, pentane and toluene are separated from the mixture. Distillation is used for commercial production of distilled water, gasoline, alcohol, paraffin, etc. So, from the video, it was very much clear to separate two liquids having a boiling point difference of greater than 25 Kelvin, we can use simple distillation method. As toluene and pentane having a boiling point difference greater than 25 Kelvin, they can be separated using simple distillation method. So, also a mixture of water and your acetone can also be separated using simple distillation method because their boiling point difference is greater than 25 Kelvin. Now, question arises in mind, if the boiling point difference is less than 25 Kelvin, if two miscible liquids whose boiling point difference is less than 25 Kelvin, 
which technique or which method will be used in order to separate them? The technique used to separate those type of liquid is your fractional distillation. For example, ethanol and water can be separated using the fractional distillation method. So, as we have already discussed that in case of fractional distillation, miscible liquid having boiling point difference less than 25 Kelvin. So, what is the difference in fractional distillation and simple distillation? In case of simple distillation, the boiling point difference will be greater than 25 Kelvin. In fractional distillation, the boiling point difference between the liquid will be less than 25 Kelvin. And if you look at the diagram, you can easily understand the difference in the setup. The setup is that here we are using a fractionating column. Why we are using a fractionating column here? Because if we use a fractionating column, the vapors which are formed, they can easily be condensed and quickly can be condensed. As the boiling point difference is less than 25 degrees Celsius or 25 Kelvin, they have to be separated quickly or quick condensation is required. So, a fractionating column has minute or small beads which provides a large surface area so that when the vapor strikes those beads, they can easily get condensed. So, dear students, let us watch another video to understand fractional distillation method. The process of separating the components of a mixture containing two miscible liquids having a difference of less than 25 degrees centigrade in their boiling points is known as fractional distillation. Let's see how to separate the components of a mixture of ethanol and water by using fractional distillation. The boiling point of ethanol is 78.4 degrees centigrade and the boiling point of water is 100 degrees centigrade. The difference between their boiling points is less than 25 degrees centigrade. Heat the mixture slowly in a round bottom flask. The temperature of the mixture begins to rise till it reaches the boiling point of ethanol. The vapors of ethanol are condensed in the fractionating column and collected in a container. When all the ethanol has boiled off, the temperature starts rising again till it reaches 100 degrees centigrade. At this stage, the second component that is water vapor rises in the fractionating column. The vapors are condensed and collected in another container. Fractional distillation is used in the production of alcohol. So, it was very much clear that two miscible liquid having a boiling point difference less than 25 Kelvin can be separated using fractional distillation. And in lower classes also we have studied that petroleum products are also separated using fractional distillation method because in there also the components are having a boiling point difference less than 25 Kelvin and that is why we use fractional distillation method. So, moving on to the next, how to separate components of a air? As we know, air is a homogeneous mixture. So, how to separate the gases which are present in air? They can also be separated using fractional distillation method, but directly gases cannot be subjected to fractional distillation method. So, what we need to do? For that purpose, we need to convert those gases into liquid first by condensation. So, how can that be done? If we increase the pressure and lower the temperature, you know gases can be converted into liquid. So, here air is converted into liquid air. 
So now liquid air contains the all the gases like nitrogen, hydrogen, oxygen in the liquid form. So here also we can say they are an example of miscible liquids. So miscible liquids can be separated using fractional distillation. So if you subject this gaseous air converted into liquid air under fractional distillation method, they can be easily separated out into individual component. That means we will obtain liquid oxygen, we will get liquid nitrogen, we will obtain liquid hydrogen. That means we can know that components of a air can be converted or can be separated by the process of fractional distillation. But the first step is they has to be converted into the liquid form. This is the diagram for separating the components of a air. So, this is the industrial setup by which we are separating liquid oxygen, liquid nitrogen and other gases. So, I think the diagram is very much clear to understand how to separate the components of an air. Now, dear students, one question in front of you, how can we purify a solid which we had obtained by the process of evaporation? For example, we obtain common salt from sea water by the process of evaporation. But as you know, salt also contains some impurities along with it. So, how to purify any chemical salt which contains some impurities? The technique that we use to purify a salt is your crystallization. So, what is crystallization? Crystallization is a process that separates a pure solid in the form of its crystal from its solution. This method is used to purify solid. And this technique is much better than evaporation. The reason being, in case of evaporation, only we separate out the solid from a solid liquid solution. Here the impurities has a tendency to remain along with the solid. So, how to separate them? So, here what again we need to do? We have to prepare a saturated solution of that particular salt. And that saturated solution has to be boiled. That means, again we will prepare that saturated solution at a higher temperature. But remember here, unlike your evaporation, we will not boil off all the liquid here. We will only boil the mixture till the saturation point is achieved. Once the saturation point is achieved, we will allow that mixture to cool down. And once the mixture cools down, as you, we have already studied, the effect of temperature on solubility of solute in liquid, as the temperature decreases, the solubility will also decrease. Here also, as the solubility decreases, the salt will separate out from the mixture in form of crystals. Look at the diagram. The three steps that is given to you. First step, prepare a mixture of that salt in water. Then boil that mixture to make a saturated solution. Then third step, allow that saturated solution to cool down at room temperature. And when that solution or the mixture is allowed to cool down, what you will observe that solid crystals will separate out. And here, the impurities has a tendency to remain dissolved in the solution. As we have not boiled off all the liquid from here, so here what can we observe that the impurities still remains in the solvent and the pure form of that salt has been separated out in form of a crystal. So here crystallization is used to obtain a pure form of a solid. So dear students, from the diagram it is clear that what are the steps that is involved in crystallization method. Let us watch another video about crystallization to understand this technique in a proper way. The process of separating a pure solid in the form of its crystals from a solution is known as crystallization. Let us see how to obtain pure copper sulphate from impure copper sulphate. Take the impure copper sulphate and dissolve it in 
minimum amount of water. Filter the impurities from the solution. Evaporate the water in a china dish to get a saturated solution. Cover the solution in the dish and allow it to cool slowly for a day. Crystals of pure copper sulfate are left behind in the china dish. Crystallization is used in the purification of salt and alum. So I think it was clear to all of you how crystallization works and how we can obtain pure form of the crystals. Moving on to the next, crystallization technique is better than simple evaporation technique. Question is why? The answer is very simple. In case of evaporation, we boil off all the solvent that is all the liquid. But in crystallization, we boil the mixture only to the saturation level. So how is it helpful? It is helpful because some solid decomposes or some like sugar may get charred on heating to dryness. Some impurities may remain dissolved in the solution even after filtration. On evaporation, this contaminate the solid. What does that mean? That means if you heat a mixture, some of the mixture of solid in liquid, if you heat them to dryness, they may get decomposed or they may get charred. At the same time, some of the impurities also pass through the filter paper. So if you boil that mixture to dryness, those impurities will decompose and can contaminate the entire solid. That is why instead of going for evaporation, if we adapt to crystallization method, we can obtain a pure form of a solid. So that is how we are obtaining pure form of copper sulphate crystal. That is how we are obtaining pure form of sodium chloride from seawater. So these all are the simple uses of your crystallization technique. So let us move on and discuss a day-to-day -day life experience. That is how we obtain pure water or pure form of our drinking water. Most of us in most of the cities, either we obtain the ground water or we get the water from the municipality. But how do we get that or this municipality corporation get the pure form of the water? That is by simple technique. What are those techniques? The techniques involves four different methods. One is sedimentation, loading, filtration and chlorination. Look at the diagram. The water is obtained from the reservoir and it is allowed to another tank which is called as sedimentation tank. What happens in the sedimentation tank? In the sedimentation tank, the heavier particles are allowed to settle down. As the heavier particle settles down, the water is transported to another tank. What is that tank called as? That tank is called as loading tank. In lower classes, you have studied about loading. That when the fine particles do not settle down of their own, they can be allowed to settle down by adding some chemical substances like alum. So when we add alum, those fine particles will settle down then that water is transferred to another chamber that is called as the filtration tank. In this filtration tank, we have fine sand, gravel, coarse gravel. So when water passes through them, they get filtered. After these three steps, water is then passed to another chamber that is called as the chlorination tank. Why chlorination is required? As you know, the water which is being supplied may not be free from the germs. So in order to kill all those microorganisms which are harmful to our human body, we go for chlorination. There in that tank, appropriate amount of chlorine tablets or bleaching powder is added so that they can kill all the harmful microorganisms. And after following these four steps, 
वाटर इज सप्लाई टू आवर होम फॉर आवर डे टू डे लाइफ यूज और वी यूज इट फॉर ड्रिंकिंग नाउ एंड इज वी आर यूजिंग इलेक्ट्रिक फिल्टर आर ओ फिल्टर दैट इज ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ रिवर्स ऑसमोसिस टेक्निक्स दो आर एडवांस टेक्निक दैट वी आर यूजिंग इन ऑर्डर टू ऑप्टेन और इन ऑर्डर टू गेट प्योर ड्रिंकिंग वाटर एंड वाटर इज वेरी प्रीसियस माइंड योर स्टूडेंट्स वी मस्ट टेक ए ओथ टू कंजर्व वाटर वी शुड नॉट वेस्ट वाटर वी मस्ट टेक नेसेसरी प्रिकॉशन एट आवर होम्स टू कंजर्व वाटर and that is how we can save our future also so that's all about the separation techniques so let us quickly summarize what we have studied so far we started for evaporation then we went for separating to solid solid mixture by sublimation then we discussed about a technique that is your chromatography then we discuss about separating funnel to separate out to immiscible liquid then we discussed about your fractional distillation and simple distillation method in order to separate out a mixture of two miscible liquids then we discussed about crystallization method then we have discussed about how to purify water so my dear students i expect that you all have understood up to this you must go through your ncert textbook in order to understand it in a much better way now let us quickly take a small test what we have understood or what we have learned from this chapter some questions are in front of you that is how will you separate a mixture containing kerosene and petrol the difference in their boiling point is more than 25 degree celsius and which are miscible with each other and i know to answer it is very simple as the boiling point difference is more than 25 degree celsius that means we are going to use simple distillation method if had it been less than 25 degree celsius we would have used fractional distillation next question in front of you suggest a separation technique one would need to employ to separate the following mixture first one mixture of potassium chloride and ammonium chloride i guess it is very easy for you because you know ammonium chloride is a sublimable solid so here one of the component is sublimable and potassium chloride is not so which method we are going to use the answer is sublimation coming to the next how to separate a mixture of common salt water and sand common salt water and sand as you know common salt is soluble in water but sand is insoluble in water so first what we will go for we will go for filtration in filtration your sand will get separated out now we have common salt and water and as you know common salt and water can be separated using the technique of evaporation or by crystallization moving on to the next question suggest a method to separate salt from sea water here directly we want to obtain salt from sea water so what is the technique that we are going to use the answer is it is evaporation so your salts are obtained from sea water by the method of evaporation so that's all my dear students take a good care do self study at your home and rest of the part we'll discuss in our next module till then take care